Assalamualaikum everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for today's video because it's gonna be talking about Ramadan, my favorite time of year. As a first time mom, it's going to be different from your past Ramadan. So I'm gonna be sharing tips and tricks so that your Ramadan can be easy and smooth as possible. I know during this time, there is that pressure as a mom to socialize, make all the amazing food, have all those kid toys and decor pieces and activities and all those things, which can be very overwhelming and takes away from the true purpose of Ramadan, which is just your connection with Allah. With that said, let's get into our first tip. First tip is for us to renew our intentions and to clean our heart. And this was actually what my last Juma khutbah was about that before we enter into Ramadan we should set our intentions we should ask for forgiveness from others there might have been a falling through of such to so always just put that hand forward and ask for forgiveness so that there is an amends to that relationship and also I think people forget also to yourself there could be a lot of negative thoughts toward yourself from past things that you've done this is really the time to forgive yourself forgive others and even ask for forgiveness from Allah before we sit on this month of renewing ourselves and becoming better. I think this is something I'm really excited about for this Ramadan is to write the intention for this Ramadan, such as like one word you wanna focus on in this Ramadan. And mine really is education in a sense. I know that's kind of broad and you could pick whatever word you want. Maybe it's back to basics, just trying to get those prayers on time. Maybe it's trying to learn more about the religion through youtube videos or it could be good deeds like your focus this month is maxing out as many good deeds as possible whatever that intention might be write it down in your book and even have a journal for ramadan during this time i think that's like amazing thing to have where you could look back on and see what you've done during that month and what you could refer back to or things that it, things that you could look back and be like oh wow i did these things during ramadan and i kept track of it and i think it's amazing honestly so i'm excited to do that this ramadan editing juhi here i forgot to mention goals as a mom um and especially if you have a younger child you might be consumed by taking care of the child and trying to survive during this time and you might be breastfeeding or um you might even be pregnant and not fasting. There are other forms of ibadah which include taking care of your child, taking care of yourself. And this is just a practical example that I'll be doing this Ramadan is just playing with my child. And that is also a form of ibadah. And during this time, whenever you're taking care of your child, you can always do dhikr or on your iPhone read Quran. Um, just wanted to make that clear that you guys are doing amazing and you're an amazing mom. Next tip is to prioritize family time and ibadah. And one way that we do this is dhikr together. My son loves like that dhikr machine, which is really cute. And I told him like, oh, you can say Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, and then you can see the number and he thinks it's really cute. He, he thinks it's really fun to see the number and it's literally the cutest thing. Bismillah, Subhanallah. Like hearing him going, oh, it's just so cute. But again, this is just more practice for the kid. It's nice to have that family time because then the child knows what Ramadan is about. One way I also educate him is through books. That's like the one way I think that could visually um, represent this month. Also through your actions as well as you as a family are doing Ibadah. Do you have some book recommendations regarding books on Ramadan? I'll leave them below. My family, we go do Tarawih. This might be more difficult if you have a newborn baby and they're really younger because they might not be used to staying up in such a loud environment in the masjid. It would be better to practice this, like going to Juma at first, seeing how the child reacts to such um, an environment, but it is better to start earlier to get them introduced to that environment than later, because it might become harder. And one way I'm gonna be doing that is trying to change his sleeping schedule, where he stays up later in the night, and that way when it comes to Tarawih time, it won't be like a complete shift. So that's one way to slowly incorporate these things that is a great way to spend your ramadan next tip is to beautify your home i think i'm really excited to actually decorate my place this is the first time i've had my own apartment so 
I'm really excited about that. But with that said, I am going to keep it very simple. I basically, I had a banner from last year and I'm just going to put that up. And my son was asking like, oh, Ramadan's coming. We got to put up the banner. And I was like, yeah, we do. So I'm, I'm happy he kind of remembers that. But it's like a cute little way of waking up and be like, oh, this is, this is the month of Ramadan. Like it's like a visual clue. Also, it's nice to have a nice clean home. Also, during this time, it's going to be spent in Ibadah. So you want it to be nice and calming so that you can have that spiritual connection. But the main takeaway is just keep it simple. Don't get carried away with all the Instagram decor and such. It doesn't have to be that elaborate, if you will. Third tip is to make realistic goals. And this is something I touched on earlier in the intro of this video. But basically, as a mom, your time is now going to be limited in how much time you have to yourself, which is going to be starkly different from the other Ramadans where you had ample amount of time throughout the night to do a bad that or the whole day or like you had time to take rest whenever you wanted but as a mom i realized like i have to be more realistic with my goals because i do have to take care of my son uh the family has to run in regards to like the household like cleaning cooking um scheduling and such so i think to have realistic expectations and goals it really could be just one goal that one goal consistently throughout the month is actually the goal like you will become better at that goal even though it's small like allah loves the good deeds that are more consistent there has to be a balance between challenging and realistic for example if i'm only reading once a uh, quran once a week week but now i'm expecting myself to read it every day during ramadan that won't be realistic it'll be too much of a challenge instead it's better before ramadan to slowly increase the amount you're reading that way when you get into ramadan it could be more smooth it could be as simple as that just trying to increase something that you're already doing just slightly more and by starting now before ramadan it'll make that goal that you set much easier to achieve prophetic eating this is regards to the tip about food don't get me wrong i love ramadan food like i look forward to it every year which is like the samosas the mirchis the dahi bare like the whole list i am obsessed with those items and for some reason they only have renewing this month which is kind of annoying it's important to have nutrition in mind during fasting and especially because these foods are kind of more oil dense and can make you feel more lethargic and sluggish when it comes time to go to Tarawi. You might not be as up for it if your stomach's like full, you know, with these foods. Obviously have a balance, like I'm not saying not to have those treats because I definitely will be, <laughs> but to be more focused on prophetic foods such as fruits, protein, nutritious foods, and I think another rule of thumb would be try to eat less than you think you need when you're breaking your iftar because sometimes like if you're in go mode you want to eat a lot then you, you're like fully full like a lot because your stomach's now smaller and doesn't eat as much so then it becomes hard to even like pray which is <laughs> this is too much but like to start like to start small like when you have a plate and you're making yourself a plate take less and then if you want more go ahead and go back for more um during this time there is like an emphasis on social gatherings which obviously is a good thing if you want to feed others and such but i think it could be focused more on like you could feed others in your home make it more simplistic and if you want to feed more people maybe talk to the masjid to have an event of that nature or even make food for the masjid so people who are com coming to eat there have that food from you and it's also better to prioritize family time and ibadah before starting this month i think it's also nice to get rid of those habits that you might be doing currently before ramadan starts one way that could be is lowering your screen time again when you're in a ramadan you want to be more present and more connected with allah so whatever um habits you're having that you don't currently want to continue in ramadan if you slowly start decreasing those that will help and it's best to write down your intention make dua that we get to see ramadan and then have the most blessed ramadan and i hope these tips help you out as a first time mom if you have any questions leave them in the comments below i make dua that this ramadan will be the most blessed ramadan may all your duas be answered i hope to see you guys on my next video see you guys later